Hello and welcome to this guide specifically created for the additional learning support team uh, on how to share information with tutors and how to track the students but it may also be of interest to tutors wondering how uh, information on additional learning support needs will be shared. The aims of this guide are to explore where to input additional learning support information for other staff to view, to show some suggestions for the format of this information in the future, how to enable teaching staff to quickly identify learners with an additional support need, how to create a tutor group to enable tracking of students from different courses, and how to share information throughout the year. First of all, let's take a look at sharing student profiles with course tutors. If we look at an example of an individual's Pro Monitor page, a student page, uh, you'll notice that uh, down the side here we have all the options that you can enter information on. And down here in support we have additional learning support and that's the heading that we'll keep uh, for this year I think. And we have uh, these four note boxes. Uh, we'll change these headings to uh, something more appropriate which I'll mention in a moment. And this is the place where we're going to input the key information. Although in year one as it's all very new and there's going to be a lot of catch up we may find that just information is being posted just into, into box one initially to get the information across. This is my suggestion of a template, uh, certainly in the future and hopefully if we can get some of it done this year of how the information might be uh, first of all recorded and then copied and pasted across. Uh, these are the four uh, note boxes basically but in a Word document. So the first one is the nature of the additional need itself and so this one for example shows hearing impairment then the impact the additional need has on the learning so this is just how it would be seen in the classroom and by the tutors and anyone working with that learner then we have the recommended adjustments uh, suggestion here although this is obviously quite a lot of information is that there are suggestions for the teacher and the, or the tutor uh, suggestions for the student which I think is quite a nice thing to show that they do have a responsibility to do certain things and possibly for the support worker as well um, uh, and if there is a support worker in the classroom. And then finally the final one is for specific support arrangements. Um, might tweak the titles of these um, shortly but something along those lines where you actually spell out um, what sort of classroom support, what exam access arrangements and any other details like maybe if they're travelling by taxi or something like that. Now what we're going to do with that information is copy and paste it into our Pro Monitor page box. So we've highlighted uh, the first box there, uh, ready to copy and paste. And here you can see straight away it's been pasted straight in with no need for any uh, uh, editing at all. It's just ready straight to, to paste in. Box 2, same again, copy and paste. And there it is, pasted into the box. Box 3... There it is in note 3, there's note 4, the support, and there's the support arrangements in place neatly in the box. There is a scroll down if there's too much information initially. Following meetings with management we've uh, agreed that in this year, in this first year, it's fine just to copy the basic information that we already have from our trackers and spreadsheets into one of those note boxes. Just make sure that it identifies the need it provides some recommendations to tutors and outlines the support that is required, so whether it's classroom support and LSA, one-to-one uh, -one with an additional support tutor, or, or what the exam access arrangements are. Briefly though, here's some suggestions for the future how this might work in terms of meeting students over the, well, when they're first interviewed over the summer, getting ready to input onto Pro Monitor in September. So here's an example of an Excel spreadsheet and as you can see uh, I've replicated those cell boxes there to input the information in as you have it and then your student name would go in this column down here. Uh, and this is my own particular spreadsheet so I have boxes to tick for classroom, one-to-one, -one, whether there's ISSS involvement, what evidence you have, if you need transition support, welfare, if there's a risk assessment need, all those bits and pieces you need. Obviously we all have slightly different systems but this could be the cells that we create on our spreadsheet so it's ready to instantly just click on the cell, 
copy and paste directly into Pro Monitor with no need to edit anything at all. So here's an example of all that information that was on Pro Monitor, what it would look like when it's copied in the cell. You can't see all of it because Excel cells only show the top line, but when you click on that cell, it will copy all of the text, and then when you paste it into the Pro Monitor, it just comes up as it would do um, out of a Word document or anything else. This next section looks at uh, quick identification of support needs for tutors. The important page on Pro Monitor for quick identification of support needs is down here in support, uh, and at the moment it's called Integrated Student Support, uh, but we're going to change the name to Student Support Overview to avoid any confusion with Integrated Services. It's a very sort of similar ISS sort of uh, format. Um, in this, lots of information could be put in here. Um, maybe this is something we could expand in the future. Uh, but the most important thing at the moment uh, is going to happen on the next slide. Um, but for this slide, we're going to change some of these titles down here uh, for information sources, that says there. So things like uh, there's a 139A on file or a specialist teacher's report. Uh, so they'll be appear down here because those at the moment aren't really appropriate to our institution. This is the bottom half of that page. Um, a lot of arrows here I've drawn on myself. Um, the key parts are at the very, very, very bottom here. At the moment it says confidential info held and you type in where the information is held, which we like, and we'll keep that. Um, this one says allergy info, which I suggest possibly change into medical or health info. Uh, hoping to add some extras in here though, um, exam access arrangements to flag it up to the tutor and an inclusive risk assessment or a peep on file. And then underneath that there's a working with area which is also useful and I think we should change these to learning support which is already there, targeted support, financial support and child care. And why this is so significant with these tick boxes is not so people look on this page to find it but on the page that I'm about to show you. When someone has created a class group, and this is an example of what a tutor would see with their, their, their actual course group. Um, I've had to blank stuff out, but um, these were photographs down here, and then there was the uh, learner number, and their name, and the date of birth. So all really useful stuff. Uh, lots and lots of information down here. Uh, lower down this page, which we'll see in a moment, uh, is actually the, the page that we're looking for, though. Uh, this is the same sort of page actually with a tutor group, um, but I've just indicated here we have integrated student support again, which will change to student support overview. And it is very much an overview in this example because um, it has all the, the pictures just like we were just seen. Uh, but when you click on this link, you'll see the page that comes next. So this page looks very much the same, same options down the side still got the pictures, still got the names, but the one thing that's different is all of those tick box options from the page that I showed you a couple ago are now showing up as, tick as tickable ones. So, for example, this one down here, I just ticked everything just to show what it would look like. And so you would indicate that learning support, targeted support, that financial support was accessed, childcare. And then in these ones at the end, it should show that there's confidential information on hold, that there's an inclusive risk assessment, or a PEEP, um, and or they've got exam access arrangements. So imagine a tutor walking in, maybe for cover even, just for a new group, and at a glance, they would have the picture as well, which is brilliant, look straight across and go, that one accesses learning support, targeted support, finance, childcare, they, need, they have a risk assessment uh, on file somewhere, or a PEEP. All of this fantastic information to see at a glance, and that's why those ticks will be really important to um, to make sure that we do tick them uh, this year so information can be seen by everyone really, really quickly. Next we need to look at how to create a tutor group to enable student tracking. Finally then, so as an additional support tutor, how do we track all of those different learners on different courses? And this is where you can set up a, a tutor group. So this is the dashboard or the home page of, of, of Pro Monitor. And it's from here by clicking on create a tutor group that we can do just that.
this is the Creator Tutor Group page, you can make up your own code, give it your own title. I would suggest ticking both of these. That protects it so that the importer, i.e. the person, uh, the course tutor for example, can't add or remove students from your group. And that one is that it's hidden on the ILP, so the group isn't displayed on the student's ILP. By that I mean that someone looking at that student's ILP would not know they were in your tutor group. When you've created your tutor group, so there's the code, the title that I gave it, my name is up there, you can add further tutors to the group, but the next thing you'll want to do, which is most important, is add your students. And that's very straightforward. You literally just click on that link and it just brings up um, a name box here. And you can just, just type a surname in and, and click enter and it will bring up a huge list of students with that surname. And you just select the one that you want and then you'll have a giant list of, of students in your group. And it can, it can be a gigantic uh, list of students. Uh, that you can dip into across all courses, uh, it doesn't matter regardless of whether they're full time, part time, as long as they're on Pro Monitor, you can make them appear in one tutor group. Finally, then back to the home page, there is my two test tutor groups that I've set up in your quick access list, and your student groups are up there if you've attached yourself to courses, but these are your tutor groups. So you could just have one tutor group for everybody you work with, and that's all that you actually have in that view. And you will then see smart targets and comments on the notice board, who's at risk, uh, comments will show up in this box down here. Uh, so only the people that you have attached will have their information appear down here. It's just a very quick um, ex way of accessing information about the students that you want to see and not just everybody. Finally, let's consider how to share information throughout the academic year. Probably the most common form of communication through the academic year on ProMonitor will be making learner comments. To do this you have to be on the individual's own page and then under the heading of Meetings and Comments, just click on Learner Comments. On the Learner Comments page, you will either be able to view comments already made, or uh, as suggested here, click on the link to add a new comment. This is the comment creation box. A lot of options here, but there's only a few that you need to worry about. You will have to select a comment type. There is an additional learning support option there. You have to select the tutors you want the comment to go to, so collect, click on that and a drop down list will appear. Uh, there's also an option at the bottom of that list to select all staff working with this learner. And then you click that button there to add them to for the attention of, and you can remove them there if you wanted to take someone off. Uh, and then that is where you write your comment obviously. And then the rest of it, so generally you don't need to worry about inputting, but the most important uh, thing to make sure you click is the save button at the top, otherwise you'll lose it. You can go back and view a comment at any time, and that, this is what it will look like. Pretty much the same, but just with some of those uh, options about who to send to uh, have been removed. All comments that have been made, uh, either by yourself or by other people about learners that, are, that you're attached to will appear in this quick comments box down here. Um, so these are all ones that, that I've added but of course it could be just a, a comment made by a tutor or another member of staff and so it gives you a quick um, access point to those comments. Clicking on the box will expand it so you can read the text because they've been shortened uh, but if you click on the blue link uh, up here it will take you through to the full comment which we saw on the previous page. Another method of communication is the uploaded documents option which doesn't come under support, it's just under the learner ILP. But of course if you put a learner comment on there to say that you'd uploaded something uh, then it would just flag it up that learning support had done it. Um, you attach the document just like you would do with an email uh, and then it appears, that's the name of the document, and it will link straight through to it from there. You can give a more accurate description, uh, and even an expiry date if you want to. Uh, and that's just so you can share information. Perhaps it might be recommendations from a dyslexia report. Obviously there's a lot of 
reports and documents which could be uploaded but uh, we're not going to go down that route just at the moment because uh, we're not entirely sure how much is appropriate to be sharing by uploading straight to ProMonitor so uh, more on that later. The final part of the communication tool loop is the ability to do reviews and to do this you'll need to click on manage learner meetings down here. You will then see this page where when you click on meeting type you can choose additional support review meeting your names are already attached and you need to give it a date of when it took place. This is the page for the record of the meeting it has all your usual basic information and with the additional benefit of uh, comment boxes so you can record the progress to date areas still for development progress towards targets in particular and then any issues that may need to be sort of actioned upon and obviously it's linked to the name of the person who's who's carried it out and there's a tick box down there to say it's been read and agreed by the student and you can say whether it's been completed in that tick box there which will show up in the in the view of it um, in the individual's page. Hopefully that's provided you with a useful overview of how additional learning support could use ProMonitor in this academic year. Any questions just ask, but otherwise just log on and start creating some content for our learners and hopefully this will encourage others to start creating more and more.